how to start work with them in Angular, uh, what are the pitfalls, etc., etc., etc. So a little bit about me. Uh, I am from Krakow in Poland. Uh, that city is in southern Poland. It's a um, historical capital city of the Krakow. I am working in the IT, comp uh, IT uh, environment and IT for over 10 years, I guess. Uh, right now, I am working as a senior software development engineer in Akamai Technologies. Previously, I was working at Oracle. I was working also as a freelancer, etc., etc., etc. Quickly about Akamai, it's a content delivery network. The company headquarters are in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Uh, we are trying to make fast internet for you. Uh, we have a lot of servers around the world to serve the traffic to our customers. And going to the point, so the progressive web app. Uh, I think that this topic should be started from the web momentum, so a little brief of history, so what we, what we have so far. Uh, the first ARPANET package in 1969, I have not been planned by my parents those days. That's the moment when I was already uh, on this earth, and this is in 1991 when the first HTML was, uh, the first website was served. Uh, in 1993, the HTML was officially published. Then we have the first, I think that this is the first moment when something like dynamic network appeared, so the PHP and JavaScript in 95. Uh, CSS, when we start to make websites beautiful, Ajax call, the first one was done in 2005, so that would be the first approach to single page applications. The HTML5, which is used widely in Angular. And finally, we are today, uh, where we have the single page apps, etc., etc., 2014, and we are coming to progressive web apps. The I would say the single page app or any, pa uh, any website on steroids. What progressive web application is, is something that is real, engaging your customer and is fast also. This is the example of application which uh, we made in Akamai in Krakow uh, for the conference which we were holding there. Uh, what's, uh, is important here from the progressive web app point of view is it is working offline so your customer can install it on their device on their device they can add it to the uh, to the desktop uh, then it got a completely separate thread when it is running on the android device it's got a, a separate place in the task manager uh, you can also send push notifications, which we are going to cover later. There are a lot of offline capabilities, and you can use any JavaScript API, which is provided by the regular browser. So what I am always saying that progressive web application is giving your customer a native app experience, an app store experience, without an app store, in fact. Why to do that? I think it's quite obvious. This uh, is just a bunch of statics which I found on the internet. Uh, those uh, numbers are based on the use case from companies like Make My Trip, uh, which says that they really increase their conversions and shopper sessions. More tweets are sent. Same on the Forbes cent after they introduce the progressive web apps, uh, progressive web app of their uh, website. They increased an engagement in push notifications, etc. And the company named Jumia also find out really huge increase uh, on how their customers are engaging with their application. All of that is possible thanks to the service worker. And here we need to stop a little bit. So norm in traditional way, when you are developing your website and the client is navigating to it, the browser dedicates for it uh, often a dedicated thread. This thread is uh, run it until the website is opened in the customer browser. The service worker is run it in the separate thread in the background and it's persisting continuously 
uh, and it doesn't matter if the page is open or not. So thanks to that we are able to perform some additional actions. We can perform actions uh, when customer is navigating away from the website. We can send the push notification to him. Uh, thanks to the service worker we can also cache uh, the content to, to provide the offline capabilities, etc. I would say that service worker is something what resides between the internet and the view in the browser. It's in the browser, but it resides between the JavaScript executed and the website which you are serving to the customer, what they see, and all the API calls and call for assets, etc., etc., etc. There are a bunch of ways to start working with progressive web apps. Uh, for those who are using Angular, I think that this is 100% uh, of this audience. Uh, just you can use the schematics provided by the CLI, uh, CLI team. If you are not using Angular or you don't want to go with the CLI, uh, you can use the workbox. Uh, it's a really uh, great tool for customizing your own implementation of Service Worker. Or you can go on with something written by your own, which in my, what in my opinion is not the best idea. Because uh, uh, code for service worker is quite complicated and you can really run into troubles quickly. With Warbox, the start is easy as hell. So what you need to do, you just need to prepare the first uh, the first thing which the first snippet which you could see here. Let's say that this is the service worker.js file. You are importing uh, the workbox into it checking if, uh, if we have it, if yes, we are saying that great, our PWA is working, service worker is working, and this script we are uh, implementing, the, the second snippet is a script uh, from the index.html file where we are looking if uh, navigator contains the service worker object, and if it is, uh, we are registering it. With Angular, as I said, we are using schematics and two files are made for us. The first one is manifest.json, uh, which we are going to cover really soon, and the ngswconfig.json, which is a set of instructions for the Angular compiler, how you want to build the service worker JavaScript file, the equivalent of the first snippet from the previous slide. The manifest.json file is in fact common for both, for Workbox and for Angular. If you are working with Workbox, you need to prepare it as well. And with this file, you are specifying how you want to... Let's all, let me use different word. How browser should treat your application when it is showing to your customer different, uh, different stages of it. So when it is asking uh, if customer want to add it to the home screen uh, where do you uh, where, where are your e icons set how uh, how you want to display the splash screen how do you want to name your application on the splash screen if you want to s uh, display in a standalone mode or uh, or you still want your customer to see the browser uh, bar and and so on and so on and so on Let's jump now to the service worker a little bit back. So we, st we said already what is it, uh, and we said what can we get thanks to the service worker. Uh, and I'm going to, right now, uh, I'm going to cover those three bullet points one by one. So let's go with content caching. Uh, and first I would like to speak about the workbox, but in fact those strategies uh, four of them are common as well for Workbox as for Angular or any other implementation. And those first two, Cache First and Network First, I think are the widely used uh, in the Internet. Uh, I think that the Cache First is the most widely used. So whenever you are making an API call or request for an asset like uh, style sheets or images, etc., you are checking if you have some in your cache, 
If you don't have them, you are requesting them from the network, serving to the customer, caching, and any other request just goes through your cache, and you don't uh, don't touch the don't touch your origin. Uh, so you offload offload it as well. There are also two other strategies. The this one, the network only, I think it's not really connected with PWA, but but there is such strategy. Uh, for some cases, it is useful. Maybe. Uh, some data like stocks uh, informations and things like that and the cache only okay so to implement those with the workbox uh, for the cache uh, for the cache first strategy which we oh sorry for the network first strategy which we see on the uh, on the first uh, first image this is the only one not super obvious. We are using the stale while revalidate uh, method on the strategies object. And every strategy, when we are registering it, uh, we are providing two things. The first one, the first parameter is the path which we want to uh, apply this strategy. We can use also a reg, because as you can see, this is a reg experience. So we can use the reg experience. Uh, wildcards, etc., 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 and the second parameter is the name of strategy which we want to use. Same for the network only and cache only strategies. Jumping to Angular and the Angular way of working with caching, uh, we are describing this in this uh, ngsw file uh, where we are saying what to cache and how to cache. And we dif Angular differentiate uh, our stuff to two groups. The first one is asset groups, and those are all external and internal parts of your application. And under parts, I have on my mind stuff like fonts, images, style sheets, HTML files, and so on. You can uh, define two strategies. The one is prefetch, the second one is lazy. Uh, lazy one cache the content when it is uh, when it is requested by the customer. So we would we could say that this is the network first strategy. The prefetch uh, is uh, downloading all the content specified by the given path. Uh, doesn't matter if it is displayed at this moment or used at this moment by your customer. So, for example, if we would put here an URL to, or you to say, oh, we have a white card with assets EMG folder, if you would use the install mode as a prefetch, we would download the whole content of this, uh, of this catalog uh, and serve it to our customer from cache. The second part from the NGSW is the data groups, and those are just API calls. Uh, we can here specify the cache config, so how long we want to cache given call, uh, if we want the freshness strategy or the performance strategy, this is the name of the uh, opposite one. The freshness, again, we could say that this is the network first, performance is cache first. Okay, so this is regarding content caching with, with Angular. Uh, quick summarize. Let's jump to something what is, in my opinion, the most interesting thing in Angular, uh, in PWAs, uh, the push notifications, how to engage your customer. Here you can see an example uh, how push notification works on the desktop, uh, on the Opera for desktop. Uh, this uh, particular example is from the Mac OS, uh, so as you can see push notification displays like the notification from any other app. And this one is from the Android device, from the Android emulator. The PWA is asking if you want to subscribe to push, if you will, the push, uh, any push uh, shows up in your, in your status bar, like pushes from from the native apps if uh, if I would click this on on this movie I would be bring to the to my PWA so this is how 
we are engaging customers. How to start with push notifications? So first thing which we need to do is to obtain keys which will be used by the, uh, by the, push, uh, by the push server. We can you can obtain those keys at the Push Companion website, which you, are all you can see here. And for Workbox, there is not really a lot of examples. The one you can see on the at the bottom, in fact, you need to provide your own implementation of push notifications. But Angular ships with really nice support for push notifications. So what you need to do with Angular is first register a client. So we are in the situation uh, where we are asking our customer or we want to register this given customer as a subscriber of our notifications. Uh, so in this snippet you could see the SV push service is provided uh, from the Angular service worker package which is installed with the ng add angular slash pwa command. Uh, and here Oh, excuse me, pardon my mistake. In this snippet, we are registering uh, with our with the keys which we obtained uh, from the companion uh, website. We are registered uh, to. No, again, pardon. I'm too nervous today. Give me a hand. So that's the moment where we are asking customer for push uh, for the subs for the permission to send him the notifications, uh, and we are doing that using our keys, uh, which we have with the with public key, which we have from the obtainian, uh, which you showed on the previous site. The private key will be used on um, the example which I will show you really soon. If our customer will allow us to send him push notifications, in, uh, in return we will retrieve the push subscription object. Which we have one super important field, the endpoint. Because this is the field to which we are going to send requests via our origin or Amazon simple notification service or any other service which you are going to use to send notifications and you get a separate endpoint for every device which subscribe to the push notifications so from one point of view I, I think that the only one point of view this is really nice solution because uh, you can group your customers you can send different notifications to different people and so on uh, so when we are on this place, in this place, we need the part which we have on the server side. And on my end, I found one and developed one solution. The one which I found, you can see in the first link. This is the pure Java, uh, Java client, uh, which is here uh, with this client when you provide their uh, the code is self-explanatory, so this is why I don't include it. But if you will just navigate there and take a look at this library, you will definitely find the place where you are using the private key, which you want to, uh, which you use with the together with public key by retrieving the subscriptions from customers. The second example is the fact extension of the first one. Uh, because I was, uh, on my end, I was using the Amazon solutions uh, together with the Lambda for serving my PWA etc. I decided to uh, use the simple notification service also uh, so I created a, um, a Spring Boot application which uh, can be run in run it in given run in given environment. Okay we are done with push notifications uh, so Push notifications, Angular 1, Workbox 0. Now let's give the Workbox a chance uh, to get the point back. A background synchronization and really, really uh, another really great thing uh, about PWAs. So imagine a situation that you would like to, uh, that you are on Wi-Fi, which in fact really often is a Li-Fi. 
So it says that you are connected to something, but you don't have an internet access or you are not connected as well. But as I said, you give your customer an offline uh, experience so they can still launch the application and probably they would like to perform some requests. With Workbox and with your own implementation of the service worker, you could pass all of the requests through the, let's say, indexed DB in this case, or whatever you would like to. Uh, pick them out by the service worker when only when it is online. Because service worker can listen for an event if uh, there is an internet connection or not. So in this case, you could provide your customer, instead of information, hey, I, you don't have internet connection, try later. You could say, you don't have internet connection, I will do it for you later. I, I have queued your request and I'm going to send it uh, in the near future, I hope. Uh, with Workbox, uh, we are using the module which is named the Background Sync. Uh, we are specifying uh, the queue name, the retention time, and again, we are specifying by the regular expression uh, the paths of the of the APIs which you want uh, to be uh, to be queued and to be synchronized in the background. As I said, Angular currently doesn't provide uh, such uh, such support. But I remember when Angular 2 was in version beta. I think that that was beta, or maybe it's one of the ready for market uh, versions. There was an option to enhance the NGSW implementation with your own modules and thanks to that that was a uh, that was a possibility to write similar implementation uh, of the background scene so I hope this uh, support for for that would be bring back soon okay pitfalls pitfalls two of them I think one is a uh, half serious pitfall, the second one is not really a pitfall in fact. Uh, how many of you are familiar with server-side rendering? One, two, three, four, oh, quite a lot. So server-side rendering, uh, why is it a pitfall and what's the problem with it? Let's quickly say what server-side rendering is. So imagine a situation that you have your Angular application done, you have created that production build, push it to the Amazon S3 or any other static hosting. And you have the Bob which is coming, making the request to your index file. And then Anna is coming and making request to some another page. And both of those people got in fact the same response as long, and it doesn't matter that, that, that they hit two completely different paths on the server. They get the same teeny HTML with a tons of JavaScript. This is not good for the first meaningful page because they need to uh, they need to, to wait until their browser will execute JavaScript and render it on, on your ends. And also this is not the best thing for the SEO and the prefetch uh, any crawlers on the internet. So for any crawler your website contains nothing as long as this crawler, crawler is not executing JavaScript. The server side rendering is a concept of moving the rendering or duplicating the rendering mechanism on the server side using Node.js. So any uh, unique request gets its unique response in HT with the rendered HTML, much richer one, and JavaScript as in the previous example. The difference here is that the first meaningful paint comes much quicker because uh, browser render HTML and CSS as first and then it goes to the JavaScript. Apart of that, uh, as you probably uh, as you're probably thinking, uh, for SEO you get and, and crawlers, you also provide them with the different uh, with the different content for, for uh, any what they are trying to crawl for your website. So what's the problem with server-side rendering and PWA with Angular? The problem is super, uh, super simple and the solution is also super simple. As you see, we are executing the server part code on the Node.js and on the Node.js we are lack of the navigator object so we are unable to register the service worker there. 
If you would try to do that on the server side, you would run into runtime exception and break your server side rendering. The solution is super simple, you, uh, or there are two solutions in my opinion. Uh, you could provide a mock of service worker module, you could do it on your own, or uh, use the ng-toolkit slash pwa package. And you could also use the East platform browser and East platform server functions provided by Angular, with which you can check on if you are executing the code in the browser or in the server, and based on that, execute slightly different paths on those environments. Okay, the second one, and this is really not serious pitfall, if it's even a pitfall. Some people say when they are starting to work in with PWAs, they, the situation is like that, that Bob is coming, making a GET request, the service worker is installed on his end. When he is navigating again to this site, uh, he uh, is served with the content from the cache, so the only traffic to the origin which goes is the API calls. Let's say that Bob finds a bug and now the people are starting to shout, hey, how can I update my PWA? Whenever my customer is navigating, he is receiving the cached version. What the hell is going on? And the answer is super simple. People are always saying hit refresh because, in fact, the second uh, entry is from the cache but in the background the browser is checking for the new version of service worker if it is there it's installing it and waiting for the uh, for a for the moment when your customer is visiting visiting this website again uh, so until any instance of the of the website is opened in any browser tab uh, you will navigate to the old version of service worker you can uh, solve this issue uh, by providing your customer with information that new update is installed or they end and you ask them to reload uh, the website. And Angular ships with really nice, uh, really nice service which is named SV Update. Uh, it's, uh, it comes with bunch of which bump bunch of methods. And here we can find an example implementation uh, how do not ask a uh, customer for refresh, but do it on, on your end, in fact, on behalf of your customer. So if the update is installed, if, it is, uh, if it's enabled and, in fact, available, that this means that it's installed. This observable says if it's already installed or not. Uh, I'm just setting the uh, location reload method. Okay, tooling. Only one tool, the Chrome Developers tab, because it ships with really nice uh, set of tools to work with progressive web, uh, together with the uh, with the really great, um, really great audit, which you can run against any website and check what you are missing in your PWA list, what you need to implement more to, to have a progressive web application, and really great support for Service Worker. The only one thing which is not working really good is the uh, offline checkbox, the offline uh, simulation. I strongly advise to don't use it because uh, it could be confusing. The better way of changing the offline capabilities is just uh, disabling the fee on your end. Now the contest and quiz. Who would like to make a wide guess which of those logos will go grey? On the next slide, which of those supports does not do not support PWA? The last. The last one. Two last. Two last. No, the only one, Safari. As far as I know, Edge supports PWA, and this is the first moment in the history that Microsoft is have win something against Apple. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. That's true. Maybe that's the reason. But as far as I know, Safari uh, team, the WebKit team, they are working really hard to bring the uh, the service worker support to to the Safari. But still, this is the 85% of the market. And as long uh, if your customer doesn't use the browser which supports service worker uh, and PWAs, 
the PWA is still just a website, so they will just run without the offline capabilities and all of those fancy things. And Apple says that they provide, th this is what Apple says, that they provide the uh, PWA support, the, the Safari support, except lack of push notifications, no access to private data, no background synchronization, the app can store no more than 50 megabytes. If a user won't use the app for a while, Apple deletes all its files. Face ID, R key, Bluetooth, Touch ID, etc. doesn't work. Locking the orientation is not possible and you don't have enough access to splash screen. So I, I think that there is no support for PWA in fact. And they are not telling true about the push notifications, or I would say that this is a half of true. Because uh, in fact there is no push notifications for Safari on iOS, uh, and there is, but there is a, uh, a way of send push notification to Safari on macOS. This is not a vapid push notification, this one which you saw uh, previously, which works on Google Chrome, Opera, uh, and uh, Firefox. Uh, this is uh, this is the implementation just for Safari, and uh, it it's expect from you to buy the Apple Developer uh, membership. You can also uh, add uh, to your website the implementation of, of instructions how uh, how the uh, iOS uh, should add your application to the desktop. Uh, for example, you can you can describe what icon do you want to use etc uh, and if you want to launch application in the standalone standalone mode like like here uh, you need to use those meta tags and link tags or you can use a really nice uh, really nice library which is named pwa compat this is the library which is just on the fly generating based on the manifest JSON file uh, the all of those uh, meta tags for Safari and for internet ex uh, for the edge browser as well uh, and for edge though it's generating those additional stuff like pinet uh, uh, like the icon on the tile tile is that this thing what is on the Windows phone desktop view I think it's tile yeah so icon for the tile and then so on so summarizing where we are regarding offline capabilities uh, in my opinion let's say okay Safari you are supported for a little bit so uh, 50 megabytes and as long as your customer is visiting your website quite frequently he got an offline capabilities add to home screen for sure you can do this with both uh, with Safari, it's not so easy like with the Android device because on the Android device you got the prompt. In Safari, you need to quick it, uh, click it explicitly. But still, we have it. And push notifications, uh, in my opinion, those which uh, Apple proposes, it's, it's just a joke. That's all from my side, and thank you for listening.